Good morning, nation. Keith Billis, Steve Marty Fit, Matt Worst joining me. Hey, I got a brand new opening today. And I'm still figuring it out. So bear with me while I'm figuring out our new opener. Uh, let's bring the guys on stage. There we go. There we go. Matt Worst. Good morning. Been a long time, my friend. I know. Well, as they say in Canada, good morning, eh? Uh, nice to see you, Keith. <laughs> see Marty. How are you guys? Good, good day. Well, yeah, well, Keith, it's you? been, um, what, it's been a decade, maybe? It's been at least a decade. I was fortunate to get to know Matt Worst in my my, my previous world uh, of, uh, of doing some stuff in the social media world, see Marty. And and uh, during our Kraski Creator conversation last week, see Marty, Matt Worst's name came up. I was like, hey, I know that guy. I don't know how you could have avoided my LinkedIn content for the past 10 years. I get tens of follows and likes per post. Tens of follows is fantastic. Uh, that, that's what our ambition here is, is in the lab. So, hey, today we're here to talk with uh, with Matty Worse. He was called out on the Craskers Creator Rankings last week. He was listed. We want to talk with Matt about where he's up to in his career, where he's up to as a marketer. But, but I framed out, see, Marty, today's discussion very much around oh where is he there he is right there very much around this idea of is the internet dead is the internet dead did the last week's announcements with google and open ai and these last number of days building up to this whole idea that is the internet how we grew up with and matt where i met you back in the early days of the internet is that internet dead because i'm here to say that it is so that's going to be the focus of today's conversation uh, that we are we are now moving towards uh, the old WW dot to the new LLM, the large language model internet, instead of the old World Wide Web. And of course, we're going to chat about what Matt works in Marty, which is the retail media network. Matt, I did my homework, Matt. Yeah, well, I'm glad you did. Maybe you can teach me something too. That's uh, that's the hope here. We all get something out of this, right? That's it. That's it. So before we dig into it, and of course, we got our accountability check-in at the 16-minute mark, see Marty. And at the 41-minute mark, we got our creator spotlight. And uh, But before we get into a big conversation, let's let Nation get a chance to catch up with Matt Worst and see Marty over the weekend here before we dive into some deep, deep conversation. Matty, how was your weekend, man? My weekend was good. I'm coming off of a big win in uh, my coaching <coughs> side profession as a uh, girls 10 and under flag football coach. I don't know where you are in the world, audience, but here in the Northeast of the United States, girls flag football is the thing. And I've been fortunate enough to coach my daughter and videos. a number of her friends. Oh, it's crazy. It's and crazy. It's, not, it's also a varsity sport now at high schools it's going to be in the olympics in four years so i feel like i'm contributing to the future of a massive revolutionary experience that's going to change <laughs> girl sports forever no, but most exciting, importantly man. we were five and oh we're the best team in the league uh, no one cried yeah so like that's a win so that was my weekend i but I'll tell you, I actually spend like three days drawing up plays and deceptionary tricks. And people are like, oh, what are you working on in there? I'm like, really complex stuff. And it's like arrows <laughs> drawing which ways the girl should go. <laughs> That's exciting, man. Real, real complex stuff, eh, Matt? Look, you got to you gotta draw arrows when you have nine-year-old girls not knowing which direction to yeah. go in, and they're all running into each other. But we've got some great athletes. Most importantly, we're having a lot of fun and, uh, you know, teamwork, sportsmanship, camaraderie. These are the lessons that are going to be really important for whatever happens next now that the internet is dead. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> Marty, how was your weekend, man? What were you up to? It was pretty chill, man. I didn't do much. Um, I kind of just hung out. Made some content. I, I, I was relaxing, as, as you saw when, when you called me the other day. I was just yes. chilling, man. Yeah, yeah. we were uh, Keith and C. Marty fit caught up over the weekend. So, Nation, y'all think that Keith and C. Marty just go hard all the time, just partying and drafting up, you know, just craziness. Yeah, it's the craziness, Matt, worst of a of a father who's coaching flag football and early to bed by 9.30, C. Marty fit. Last night again, pal, 9.38. Congratulations. Yeah, yes. Good job. Exactly. This is true. It's true to have those early. I felt just spectacular this morning when the dogs got me out here. So I bet. That's it. That's it. So, Maddie, we are, uh, 
you know, we're, we're new at this morning show where I think we're on show 52, 53. We started this thing a number of weeks ago, myself, Nicole Bernard, with this idea that I said, hey, if we create content in the morning and create this old school morning show, like how I grew up and maybe you grew up at worst, I thought to myself, hmm, well, people show up. And yeah, sure enough, people are showing up and joining our conversation and, and being part of this new thing we're trying to create. Well, I've been, um, you know, I've been watching the last few episodes over the last week or so since we got reconnected and it is a big world out there, right? Like people in our network from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you think that you keep tabs on everyone I know. and it's kind of impossible, yeah. right? There might be yes. someone from high school or a yes. job you've had 15 years ago. And yes, the internet and World Wide web makes it smaller, but think about the literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of people that we've come in contact with and with whom we've had great relationships. And it's just, it's a zero sum game. Right. Like someone comes in and that means probably someone goes out. So I am. Look, I I think the show is great. I think you guys do a great job. The most important thing that's missing. Why don't you have those like matching coffee mugs yet? That's the only (laughs) thing needed for a morning show. You don't need anything else. That's a good idea. The mugs. Keith, come on, man. (laughs) Step it up. Let's go. All right. Okay. So since we're talking merch, since we're talking <laughs> merch, I'm going to be frank with both you gentlemen. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Matt, I, I talked to Keith about this like last week about merch and getting some matching things for the show. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all about branding, right? If we want to talk about marketing, uh, let me give you my five tips to being a successful uh, you know, TV show, streaming show marketer. Number one, mugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like we'll get that. to the I other like four. That. Stay tuned, listener. <laughs> All right. So, so straight up, I've been hearing it from everybody about merch lately. And see, Marty Fit, I will tell you that I have some tabs open on my computer. Yes, I have tabs open that are, are on a website about merch, hats, and maybe some t-shirts. And and I haven't thought about mugs, but apparently today I'm adding mugs to the order. So Smarty, just, Maybe just for you guys as the yeah, host. Yes, yeah, so I can't disagree with that. What a wonderful idea. So hats and mugs is is coming into the lab. They'll be for sale. I had some people see Marty last week saying, hey, how come I can't buy a hat from you? All right, I'm like, all right, okay, enough. I don't need to hear it from you. I already hear from Marty. I'm going to get you hats, Nation. So we got hats coming. Speaking of, so so Maddie, I, I, I got a little problem with my friend Chris here, actually. I, I, I got to call him out, actually. So Chris has no idea that I'm about to call him out here, but... So I was oh, chatting with my buddy, uh, uh, Matt. You might, might remember Nicole. I'm sorry. You might remember M- Maurice Jingra back from the old days of, of uh, when we worked together. So Maurice and I were chatting this weekend. He's like, Keith. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I noticed that. Um, I noticed that. I, I, this year. I noticed that Marty calls you OG. I'm like, yeah, he does call me OG. And I, I thought, yeah, because I, I know I'm the original gangster. And he's like, Keith. I'm like, yeah. He's like, no. He's calling you the old guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? He's actually been making fun of me the whole time. Like, I'm all cool. Think my kids are like, yeah, dad's the old G Matt worse. Because, you know, Matt, I got a couple young kids like yourself. So, you know, I'm, 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 I sit around and I prop up C. Marty all the time, talking to my kids about how awesome C. Marty is. And then yesterday, it's made clear to me that I'm probably just the old guy to C. Marty. The OG, Matt. Can you believe it? I, well, I can believe it because I know how long you and I have been working in this industry. But you know, I thought OG, you were talking octogenarian. That's what I thought the O meant. You're not that old. So you still got at least half your life ahead of you. So don't worry about that. Um, but I, what I think is actually really an interesting integration of the topic that you introduced earlier and, and the age of the internet, right? Like we go through these phases in our lives. We go through these cycles of you know peaks and valleys emotionally professionally and i think age is something that is really like oh age is just a number you hear that cliche all the time but i think the connection to things that we're passionate about whether it's creativity or content or coaching or other c words maybe i don't know (laughs) that keeps us vibrant it keeps us energetic you know you got to match that up with being physically healthy to keep you young yes right which i'm not as good at in the balance maybe but there are times i feel my age there are times i feel much older and there are times i feel like i could do this for another hundred years (laughs) well so let's put all jesting aside with my good friend c marty who i know i know he's thinking of me as the og the original gangster so that's exactly what i'm just going to hold on to of course 
Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Marty, we got a shirt coming that says OG on it. <laughs> I'll wear it. I'll wear it with you. <laughs> So let's let's pivot to this. Let's pivot the light, Marty. Let's pivot it over onto Matt to ask Matt, who's Matt worst? Who is who's Matt worst in 2024? I want to shine light. I want to create some content with you right now, which is answering the question: Who is Matt worst? <clears throat> well, I I wish I had 40 plus more years to prepare for that question <laughs> because <laughs> on any given day it might change. But I've really had these three different phases of my professional career, but underlying all that is just a, a passionate marketer, creator, innovator who loves to be at the forefront of doing interesting things that I uh, things that I find interesting, but also as an entertainer, as an educator for others. So you go back to my career, I, my first 10 years were in sports. I worked in professional baseball and really got my start in content creation at the NBA. So think of this like sports phase as a marketer and a content creator where I learned a lot of aspects of this business, both right brain and left brain. And as a startup that I um, helped build that a bunch of pro athletes actually invested in, Derek Jeter, LeBron James, guys like that, um, the company was acquired and the agency with whom I was working was this small, you know, 30, 40 person shop called 360i. And 360i, I, I knew of them as a great agency that was doing SEO and they were helping with our newsletter, but it was not the behemoth as a marketing engine that and, and innovation that it became. But I had this idea, like, let's make social marketing a thing, right? Facebook was new. YouTube was new. Twitter was new. I was like, look, this is a place where brands might have a place. So let's give it like 90 days. Let's figure it out. We'll go to some of your clients and we'll say, is this a thing? Let's make it a thing. And I stayed there like 10 years. So from 90 days to 10 years, we helped build out a framework for what marketers and creators from an influencer perspective and a brand perspective and even supporting the platforms like Facebook and then Snapchat and Twitter and TikTok would become. Right. That was a core component of where I saw myself and built a team of community managers and strategists. And that put not only the agency on the map and we had a great team. I'm not taking full credit for this, but through the acquisition that you and I both went through of a, you know, a parent holding company really got to learn much more about the advertising industry and connecting with other brands, other agency partners, other ad tech, martech. And I spent the next 10 years in that space, the agency world, right? But as the agency um, ebbs and flows come and go, I kind of got the bug to do some entrepreneurial tech work. And I've spent the last five years either as a fractional marketer or a kind of temp to perm CMO, working with a number of different early and emerging stage technology companies, including two or three that I'm working with now. And maybe that'll be where the next five years go. Maybe I jump in and get married to one of them. But no matter what, the underlying thread has been that convergence of creativity, marketing, and technology. And I don't see that changing, whether there's a new version of the internet, whether AI replaces me, whether I get a chip in my brain telling me what to do, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to follow that passion and then lead with passion. That's excellent. That's excellent. See, Marty, question for Matt before we jump into accountability check-in? Yeah, definitely. You, you said something about, uh, you know, maybe AI m m might take my job. How, how realistic do you think that is? And do you think that's going to, like, you know, really affect a lot of people? I think so. It's two questions, and they're both great ones. And, you know, we're hearing it a lot. I think AI is something that is not only unavoidable, but we should be embracing. Run to the fire, not away from the fire. And fire, in this case, is energy, passion, it's innovation. It's changing a lot of things about how many different industries work, whether it's in marketing or operational or finance or you name it. It's going to change everything. And it already has. But AI as this umbrella concept doesn't really mean a whole lot to me because there are so many micro focused aspects and specific strategies and applications that are going to evolve with. The technology is so different. We've got LLMs, we've got generative imagery, but we've also got 
advanced analytics and a number of different ways that we can code now. And you're seeing new things that are going to impact things differently or people differently and processes differently. So I'm much more intrigued about more of the macro and operational aspects of AI and how that's going to change industry and commerce than I am about how it's going to change creators right now mm -hmm. or because I, I still think a lot of the output is mediocre. No offense to mm -hmm. you know, the, those mm -hmm. tools. I mean, they're revolutionary, but they're only as good as the sum of the input. And most of the input, let's be real, that people have created over time is not great. Some of it's great, a small yeah. fraction, a yeah. large fraction of it, percentage of it is meh, and a lot of it is bad. So it's got to still learn and it'll get better. Uh, but the first question you asked you, Marty, was, is it going to take my job? You, you hear the expression, you know, it's not going to take my job. It's just going to take the job of the people who don't embrace it, right? If you know how to use different tools that are applicable for your job and your function, great but to me ai is about output and the human factor is still going to be about defining the objectives and making sure that we hit our outcomes and if the output is improved because we've set clear objectives and clearly defined what outcomes we need great i'm excited for better output sure I, uh, it's, it's a fascinating conversation that I, that I want to continue having over the hour here with you, Matt, and hope, and I know you, I know we have you until, till to the bottom of the hour. If you're able to stay till the top of the hour, that's fantastic. Um, but I want to, I want to jump into our accountability check-in before we come back to our conversation around, is the internet dead? Is AI replacing us? Uh, Keith and Marty have an announcement later today about AI, uh, how it's going to make some appearances on our show. But first of all, let's jump into our accountability check-in. We do that every time it, every single day it's accountability mondays right now see marty where it's monday people are kind of going oh, i don't know i want to get my week going i don't want to i don't want to you know marty june's around the corner man and we both know we're talking about june resolutions for nation here we're teasing that for people so you know if you've had your january resolution as out the window well keith and see marty got coming something coming up to tease you guys but today's accountability mondays it's about just getting things going you know in canada it's a long weekend marty it's it's, it's a holiday today here in canada and I'm certain there's people still sleeping right now. And if you're getting up, tuning into us, and you're thinking, I don't want to do something today, no, do something. Just do something. Do something to move the needle forward. So today's accountability check-in is about accepting the struggle, embracing it, embracing walking towards the fire, as Matt said, right? Don't accept the easiness, accept the hard, right? So when you think about if life was easy, you'd be stuck in a mediocre existence. And I don't know about you, Matt. I don't know about you, Marty. I don't want to be stuck in a mediocre existence, right? Struggles, challenges, setbacks. For my POV, they're all just fuel for growth. Facing, sorry, Nicole Bernard, facing shit makes you grow. It just, it just does. It turns you into a better you, a stronger you. If everything was easy, would you make your achievements? And I'm going to argue that the answer is probably no. And I know somebody who, who who lives a philosophy of taking time in the gym and teaching his customers how to be better. Marty, you know, going to the gym is not an easy thing. Getting under the squat rack is not an easy thing. Getting under the bench is not an easy thing. But it's those uncomfortable moments that push your limits. That's what makes you stronger, nation. It's those tough moments that define you, not the easy ones. Because the easy ones are going to happen. Right, Marty? They're going to happen. Those easy ones are always going to show up. They're always going to be there. It's those struggles that, you know, we are trying to encourage people that tune into the show to embrace today. So if you're tuning into us right now in North America at, uh, you know, 20 after 8 Eastern time, and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know if I want to go embrace something difficult today, go do it. Just go do it. And, and, and embrace it. Go figure it out. It's going to suck. Hey, Marty, it's going to absolutely suck. Absolutely. Right? But, you know, you're going to feel that much better when it's done. And uh, you're going to have a positive check mark on the side of your day today going, yeah, all right. I embraced the struggle. I walked towards the fire and I didn't get burned. So there's your accountability check in. Accept the struggle. Embrace it. Don't deny it. It's just so easy to walk away from things. Embrace it. It's going to make you a stronger human. So there's our check in today, Marty. Matt. Yeah, if you hit if you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. So all of those those hard times, those obstacles, it's only going to make you better. And then um, another thing I wanted to say about that is uh, I forgot. Well, yeah, that was the main thing I wanted to say. I had something to say, but I forgot. But yeah, 
hitting rock bottom is great. You can only get better. So embrace that. Just like Matt said, run to the fire. It's true. It's true. Matt, do you got a tip for our accountability check in today before we move on to the internet being dead? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I hadn't really planned this, but I'm someone who likes to ask myself on a semi-regular basis. You call yeah. it an accountability check, and I like that. I should put that as like a reminder in my calendar. Yes. But it's it's kind of a constant reminder to ask yourself what matters. What matters today? Uh, yes. What matters tomorrow? What matters in life, right? I think our health and contentment matter. You talk about struggle or you know, people are suffering every day with something that's like pressing you down and you have to submit to it and bear it. You, it's just a part of life. But if, as long as you adhere to some sort of personal mission and you set long lead and ongoing goals, but like plan your day, plan your weeks. I make a joke about putting in my calendar as a reminder, but it's not actually a joke. If I shared my screen with you, you would see all these little reminders and things I need to do. Sometimes it's personal. Sometimes it's just like check in with someone. But I've actually seen people say that like a single habit of doing like this can increase your productivity by 50 to 80 percent. So actually like putting things on the calendar and defining what matters that day, that week, then you'll do it. You'll live up to it. No, I, I Listen, I don't think it's foolish at all, Matt Worst. I think you're bang on with that whole idea of accountability, checking and putting stuff on the calendar. You know, Martin, and I talk about it often. It's easy just not to do things. So if you put it on, your, if you write it down and put it onto your calendar, and say, so, okay, I'm spending 30 minutes right now of going for a walk or 30 minutes right now to do this. Make it important to you. Why, why do we write down our meetings with our lawyers or our dentists? Because it's important to us. But yet, you know, uh, I got to go for a walk with Marty. I'm not writing it down on my calendar. Huh? How is it any important than to go into a lawyer? My only, I, I would add an asterisk to this, which is, by the way, if you work at a big company or a small company and you have shared calendars, Remember, if there are certain things that are just for you, maybe make them private. If it's like, you know, just, you yeah. know, I, I, yeah. make sure you know that people might be able to see your calendar. This is true. This is true. All right, yeah, avoid embarrassing moments. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. All right, so let's uh, let's pivot. Let's pivot to a controversial topic that I think is uh, we're just starting this discussion, gentlemen, around this idea. Is the internet dead? Now, I have read a couple of articles over the weekend. I've been postulating on this for a number of weeks. I've been reading and watching. I'm a nerd, so I spend a lot of time watching this stuff, and I'm trying to build a business on the internet. And I'm looking at it, and I'm paying attention to it, and I'm seeing the announcements that Google made last week, and I'm seeing the announcement Open Eyes made last week. But Matt Worst, you know, you and I met in the old days of social media. I'm sorry, the old days of media and you coming out of the NBA and 360 on social media and the early days of the, of, of the, of the World Wide Web, the WWWs. Mm -hmm. Now, you two gentlemen live in the States. I still live here in Canada. I don't have access to this yet. But last week, it struck me when Google made the change saying, we're now adding generative Google AI results to your searches. And if you really want to search the web, you got to click the web tab. I'm like, what? And if you gentlemen don't know what I'm referring to, you know, Google's rolled out a new search mechanism in the States where when you hit search, it doesn't search the web for you naturally. Yes, you heard me say that correctly. Google does not search the web for you naturally. You have to ask it to search the web for the web pages. So wait a minute, wasn't Google invented to search the web, but yet it's not doing it anymore? So Matt Worst, is the internet dead in 2024 before I come over to UC Marty, I'd like to know your opinion on this. I mean, the internet is far from dead, but I would say, you know, the king is dead, long live the king, right? The idea of the internet is not dead, but maybe the monarch of the time, which may have been mm. search or social, that dies and something new comes along and we have a coronation and they serve us or maybe are just figureheads. but. That's kind of, depending if you're in Canada, right? Sometimes the monarch is just a figurehead. Yes. But the idea of the monarchy has been around for millennia. And I think the internet, while not around as long, um, is a similar concept where, you know, holistically, we are connected. We are able to access and engage and connect and create communities around this concept of the web. Sometimes it is more centralized. Sometimes it's more decentralized. The technology that powers it 
will come and go and change. And I think that's what's exciting. Uh, but, you know, I subscribe to I don't know, maybe 15 newsletters. I don't know how many it is. But every day it's like something new. And I feel like I'm falling behind because the information that is happening is at an accelerated rate. And a lot of it is still tied to the internet as a foundational piece. Uh, I'm, an, I'm a blockchain enthusiast. I'm not a crypto bro, but I'm, an, I'm a blockchain enthusiast. I was like, oh, blockchain is going to kill the internet. But guess what? Blockchain is the internet. AI is the internet. You could have standalone AI functionality and tools, but the power of AI is really about just making our connections, our content, our community, our collaborations better. So the internet is dead. Long live the internet. Marty, what's your POV on this? You know, you're, you're of a, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to preface this, you're of a different demographic than myself and Matt. So I'm curious to know your POV on this. You grew up with the internet a little differently than perhaps myself and Matt did. As you continue to grow your career and you grow your business and you, and you look at, you know, using these tools as your everyday life, what's your POV on this whole idea of the internet or the internet, how we know it being dead? How do you use Google? How do you use social? Is the internet dead to you, see Marty Fit? Uh, I, I don't think the internet's dead. I think it depends on uh, what you're looking for. So if you're if you're searching, right? Let's say you're searching for a definition, right? And you, you can use AI to get that exact definition you need. You don't need to. You don't need web pages for that. You can get exactly what you need. But you know, let's say you're searching for a trainer in my field. You might not want one answer. You might want a different web pages or different websites, uh, different options to pop up. So I, I think it depends what you're looking for. And I'm a, I'm a millennial and, uh, you know, we still we still have some some say so out here. <laughs> like we, we still have some respect. And so I, I feel like um, we we still wanted our way, what we grew up on. But, you know, if you look at your daughter, for instance, there she's not really growing up on that. So there's going to be a demand for, you know, the, the AI, you know, finding exactly what she wants, having a conversation with AI. So I, I think it just depends on what you're looking for. But I don't think the Internet is dead. There's still a demand for it. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if 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 it's this idea that. I guess when I ask if the Internet is dead, one of the questions I'm asking myself is the Internet was born, Matt and Marty, <clears throat> on humans contributing content left and right creating blog posts creating audio content video content and building this large trove of information and then as time has gone on these large language models have taken that information and created these new ways of searching that information what's the motivation matt for you and i and marty to keep creating content to feed the machines if we're not going to be monetized for that content that we have been creating which really is how the first iteration of the internet was created. Now we're moving into this maybe new iteration of what the internet is. How, how are humans going to want to still contribute to these machines, knowing what the machines are doing with it and going, wait a minute, why do I need to go and make a website when Google's not even referencing a website? Because we know now with Google, Google's generative AI results, if I ask a question about how to, how to become a, how to, how to build a bigger chest in, in, in bodybuilding, you know, it's not going to take me to see Marty Fitz's website, Matt. It's going to give me a generative result on that page. Hence, there's no reason for Marty to build a website. There's no reason for Matt Worst to build a website. So when I talk about the internet being dead, that's what makes me curious, Matt Worst. Yeah, I don't think um, from a content creation or even a participation perspective, the financial aspect is what actually drives most people to participate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I work with right now, I'm, I'm involved with and in marketing for and strategizing around two different companies, one of which is a company called Chasm, which is a white label technology solution that helps brands build loyalty programs and gamify interaction. Mm -hmm. And that interaction can be online, offline, but really across all touch points. So no matter where we are, the engagement with each other, or in their case, a brand is key. But the, the actual underlying engine behind all of this, which I think is the question and the root of what you're talking about is what motivates us? And there are these core drives of motivation 
that I think about and that we talk about a lot. And one is just about development and accomplishment, right? How do you compete with someone on a leaderboard to get to the top, right? Like I might play a game and want to get all the way up top or answer questions on a quiz or a poll or the more that I comment on your Instagram or LinkedIn posts, I could earn points and level up, right? Mm -hmm. But another motivation is actually loss and avoidance. It's, you know, how do I not miss out on something? So there's social proof, there's recognition, there are all these different psychological and sociological factors and economic factors that drive people to participate in different ways. And if you are a creator, if you are a marketer, an advertiser, or really anyone who's posting something, you need to understand the value exchange. What are you giving? But what do you want in return? What's going to motivate these individuals that you're talking to to do it? Because just posting content and no one sees it, maybe that's good enough for you, right? Like maybe it's a creative outlet. I write things that very few people read and I create things that a lot of people see. And I don't, I'm not doing it for the social proof and I'm not doing it for monetization. I'm doing it more as a creative outlet for myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I find interesting, and I'm going to reference an article that I read here this weekend and, uh, and we'll, we'll showcase some of it. But what I find interesting is that, you know, by making the internet less inviting for humans to contribute, and I got the quote here on the, on the bottom here to the web's collective pool of knowledge, Google's summary answers are going to leave its own and everyone else's tools with less accurate information. So if you think about it, Matt, if, if we stop creating, if humans stop saying, I'm going to continue, I'm going to stop contributing content to the free web. I'm going to only put stuff behind subscriber walls. I'm only going to put stuff behind paywalls. Does Google become less effective? Does the AI large language models become less smart? And do we end up in a world where we have a world of splintered in, in information platforms. Let's be honest here. You know, X and Facebook and Instagram, Marty, and and these TikTok, they're shopping malls. They're private networks that are, are shopping malls, essentially, of human beings, you know, building these large language models and just feeding the information back to the other human beings. The, the, the web itself that we grew up with it really doesn't matter anymore. Like who's who's building and searching websites? We go to LinkedIn, we go to X, we go to Instagram. We don't go to the web anymore, Marty. Matt, do we? Do you, do you go to the internet, Marty? Like do you, Marty, do you use the internet itself? I'm going to be willing to bet you do not use the internet, Marty. You only use probably your social platforms. Am I correct? That's why I said it depends. I mean, I, I'm I'm a nerd, so I you know when I'm when I'm researching stuff, I I, I do use the web. I go to different sites to get different opinions, different perspectives on things. But I, I, that's that's why I said it just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. yeah but, I guess but to clarify, to answer, Keith, are, are you asking, are you saying the internet is like search and social only or the internet as an umbrella term for everything? Because well, I'm, I'm thinking the underlying architecture, Matt, of, of really what the internet is, right? So if we think about, you know, it, it's, it, it is an underlying architecture that our social platforms and everything sits on. But if we think about how we were raised with it, Matt, and how we used it, you know, when you were at 360i, when you were at the NBA and how you were using the internet per se, it was natural for you to sit down at your desk, as C. Marty said, go to Google, search your information and, and, and move on with your day. Well, we don't do that anymore. We go to LinkedIn, we go to X, we go to Instagram. I would argue that we go to Facebook, we go to these closed networks. Right. These well, I, don't, I don't know that they're closed, but they're still very open and it's still the same underlying behavior. Some mm -hmm. of the information that we're leveraging on these platforms might be different. So an open Google search as opposed to searching on Amazon or TikTok, it's still the same behavior. It's just the information that we're going to get back is more limited or open, depending on how accessible that information is. But the behaviors, the curiosity, the content that is evolving. Now, I, some will argue, including me, that that's not all positive, right? The dawn mm. and evolution of social created a lot of misinformation and a lot mm. of dangerous information yes. and websites that are contributing to just the deterioration of aspects of our society. Yes. Certainly civility is, you know, eroding and... and um, well, and the I think politics of it all is obviously not great at the moment, but also we can get things more quickly. We can do things more easily. So 
it's definitely evolving, but um, that's, I, I that's, still think the underlying behavior of why we are motivated to get this information is 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 similar, if not the same. Marty, I, I, I was going to say that's a good point because if I'm looking for scientific research or or scientific study, I'm not going on X and and using the search engine there. You know, I don't, <laughs> and I don't think I don't you're going think to the library, right, to look at an encyclopedia. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I think one of the questions I'm asking, gentlemen, is that, you know, today's web exists because millions of people over the years have spent decades extending it with bits of knowledge, lore, and images. And that process is the only reason today's AI is able to know anything about everything. So these humans, they contributed with a variety of goals to burnish the reputations, win status, like you said, Matt, help others out, meet like-minded people, right? Um, but if Google or OpenAI answers most of the world's questions using a single AI voice or an OpenAI's voice, now we have two of them, right? So now we have either Google or OpenAI's voice. There's that much less incentive for anyone to share their expertise and creativity on the web. Because Matt, if, if let's, let's stay on the tune of fitness, see Marty fit, you know, it's an evergreen topic. What's the point of see Marty creating a new piece of content around, around a better workout when Google's just going to surface the answer anyways, and just make Marty irrelevant. But the power of Marty is actually an additional layer of genuine connection, right? I can get information, but if I don't know the source and I don't necessarily trust mm. the source, that doesn't make it better. It's an input based on an output that I can yeah. leverage and discern and distinguish and say, yeah, some of that may be interesting. Some of it may not. But if I know C Marty and I've trusted him and he's cre created something for me that's worked that genuine. So AI may be authentic, but C. Marty is genuine. Mm -hmm. So it's another layer of trusted, resonant emotionality. And that's what I think comes out of the social media era on the positive side, which is the power of referrals and connections and genuine understanding where I'm more likely to trust you because you've told me something and you and I know each other and we like each other and we get along than a Google search result. I would always trust you over a Google search result. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, Martin and I were talking about this this weekend, uh, Matt, because uh, we're going to weave in. So when, when the new open AI uh, voice mode rolls out here in the coming days, we're going to, we're going to include it as, as, as the friend on our show. So in the coming days, we're going to have an open AI co-host on our show and it's going to become part of our conversation. But Matt, you raise a point here, which Martin and I were talking about this weekend, which is, okay, so all the information is, is accurate. But you as the human being, you're going, okay, I got this information here. But if C. Marty says this, I'm going to lean on what the human says because I trust Marty. And I believe the same way you do, Matt, and I, I know Marty does as well, that that's going to be how perhaps the, this generation is going to consume content. But Matt, I'll be honest with you, and I was telling Marty this yesterday. Uh, my, uh, my daughter, Brooklyn, was yesterday sitting down with my open AI, my chat GPT, and she was talking to it. And she was talking to it just like we're having this conversation right now. I don't know if her generation sees the same point of view that we do, Matt, because she's going to grow up trusting Marty, that little digital assistant in her pocket, Matt, just like your kids are going to. And Maddie and, and Marty, when you have kids, eventually they're going to grow up in a world of being raised by these AI assistants. And I so, think there's going to be a level of trust with them, Marty. So, so you, do you think in that generation or say when I have kids, there's going to be a less demand for human connection just because of, the exposure. Ah, that's a good question. So no, I think, okay, fair question. Great question, Marty. I, th I don't think no, not a less demand for human connection. I think kids like Brooks and Matt, maybe like, you know, are you, how old are your kids, Matt? Eight, nine, you said? Uh, 13 and it's about to the 10. Okay. So yeah, actually your kids are closer to, to my kids though. So my kids are kind of on that bridge though, but Brookie who's eight and Marty, your kids eventually, I think that they're going to have a fine balance of what's human, what's AI. And by that time, those AI devices are going to be so human-like where they're really going to form a relationship and they're going to grow up not really thinking of the internet the way that we thought of it. The internet is going to be its brain, its knowledge, 
but they're just going to use large language models and these 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 engaging machines in a way to move them forward, not necessarily to treat the internet like we've treated it. But but yeah. I do agree with what Matt did say though. Sorry, just to bring this point to to a close, the human connection, and I think and that's how to me we're going to monetize this business. Information's free. Information's largely readily available to everybody. But I really want to know Matt's human experiences so I can gain from that. I want to know C. Marty's human experiences so I can gain from that. That, I think, is going to be a generational discussion here that we can that we can grow with. Matt? Yeah, I mean, there's several trends or themes that, that coexist. And AI is not alone in <laughs> the way that content and connection are shaping our community. We've got, and look, my 10-year-old daughter whether this is a positive or probably not, uh, she spends as much time on YouTube engaging with content created right now by real people. Uh, and that impacts her trust, her mm -hmm. knowledge of different types of sources and resources. Uh, I think the next generation, I don't know, she's, she's Gen Alpha. So whatever comes next, is, oh, beta, yeah. is, is that what's next? That's going to be a little bit different. So maybe see Marty, your kids will be in a different world. <laughs> but I think I even, even as... Like, but uh, my kids are in, in school, obviously, and they're encouraged to use technology for certain things and not for others. And as long as we have curation of these tools, and maybe this is wishful thinking, but limitations, whether they are, you know, federally or internationally regulated in some way, or at the school level, or even at a parent level, we have an obligation to manage, monitor, moderate the use of this technology with our kids. Yes. Uh, but I can't imagine a world where I'm just going to be like off playing golf somewhere and an AI robot is getting my kids ready for school and helping them with their homework. And I just and so coaching their football team. I don't see I, that happening. I, I do. So with all respect, friend, I, 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 I look at it a little differently, Matt. I, I see that that world is potentially a place now don't gentlemen don't look at me as some dystopian freak no i'm just i'm opening my mind to it because it's hard for me not to connect the dots when we see you know the stuff working you know at the tesla factories with those robots we see the robots coming out of china we see some of the stuff that uh the robotics companies in the u.s are making so you see these physical entities that that are being created and then you see the announcements last week by Google and chat and, and open AI around these large language models now speaking to us, man, you put that software onto that human robot and Matt, you now have somebody making the kids dinner, helping the kids with homework while you are coaching your kids playing football. That's fine. But uh, again, if it can take away some of the menial tasks, yes, I don't want it to replace the connection component of it. Like, yes. Yeah. Go boil some pasta. Cool <laughs> yeah. when it's ready, but I, I'm going to sit down and make sure that I'm still having dinner with my kids. Or yes, you know, if it, if they're going to design the optimal football plays to maximize the likelihood of you know 86 percent chance you're going to score a touchdown on this play, I, I want that information. But when I'm on the sideline or coaching, and like I'm going to be the one clapping and high fiving, and when yes. someone's injured, going over there to make sure they're okay, not sending my robot assistant out to do those things fair, fair point fair point it's a fascinating world and i want to so gentlemen uh we're here we're joined by matt worse this morning cmo marketer friend of the lab and i always say this keith and c marty say this all the time once you're a guest of the lab you're a friend of the lab and matt we go back even further so you're more than a friend man you're welcome back here all the time this is a great conversation this is my ambition here is to put topics on the table that get people thinking get people curious and i want to show you guys what what drew me into this, as I said, I've been reading about this a lot. I've been thinking about it a lot. And I stumbled across an article this weekend. And see, Marty, I want to shine the light on this gentleman as our creator spotlight today. Uh, I want to shine the light on somebody who wrote something about this this weekend. I, I, I read it. I considered it. And I wanted to, you know, shine the light on this gentleman who, who wrote something uh, today. And Marty, I have something prepared for this. Watch this, man. I'm going to do our creator spotlight right now this morning is going to be on do 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 i gotta try to do two things here at once i'm gonna try to do my my set my sound effects while at the same time i do my presentation of the creator spotlight today gentlemen is going to be scott rosenberg yay hold on hold on here goes oh no not that one this one here there we go 
Scott Rosenberg, he is featured in our creator spotlight. He is a reporter for Axios. Now, Scott, I'm not paying you for this. <laughs> and I'm only bringing this up because of a conversation I had with somebody else this morning. Scott, I love your work, <laughs> man. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, you know, Marty, you know me well. I, uh, Scott, I love your work, man. I, uh, I found your article this morning, actually over the weekend. I, I, I dug into this morning. And gentlemen, I want, I want to call some pieces out of it because I, I think what Scott really talks about here is, you know, Axios is a great piece. You know, you get some great information from Axios. But he really asks the questions around, you know, did AI eat the web? You know, Google shift towards AI generated content is displacing the similar list of links of, you know, rewriting the internet could, could accelerate the decline by 30 plus years. And, you know, Matt, I thought this was relevant even just because you came out of the world of search and 360i, you know, Scott really frames it out, you know, why we should be concerned about this, you know, what's the news about it, um, the deeper damage to this. And I brought it up earlier, guys, that if, we continue to make the web less inviting for humans to contribute, are we going to stop contributing to the web? And then as a result, if humans stop contributing to the web, well, where is AI gonna get its next generation of knowledge? It's gonna be synthetic content that it's going to generate. So at some point, does the web and does large language models eat itself because it's just going to be a, a, a bust of, Human content regurgitated to AI content, regurgitated AI content, and then, and then over time it just becomes this regurgitated dead place of content where, you know, and you think about it, Matt, you brought it up earlier, you know, social media platforms started the slow dismantlement of the open web long before Google started doing AI summaries. You know, and I loved what Casey Newton, shout out to Casey Newton on the platformer, and I would encourage everybody to go check out the platformer with platformer. Casey Newton. Yeah, great, great stuff, man. He talks about these transformations are taking place over years, not days. The web is withering. It's not collapsing through a sort of managed decline. And I loved how Scott talks about this. The bottom line is this. If Google doesn't manage the decline with care, AI could end up not only eating the web, but swallowing its own sustenance. And Perplexity is CEO. And I don't know what you, Matt, I use Perplexity all the time. Marty, and I think you do as well. But, uh, you know, it, it, in many ways, I think perplexity is eating Google's web. In a world where everyone gets answers and doesn't have to click on links, the biggest loser is Google. And as far as I'm concerned, that has been the Internet up until now, which, is, which phrases me the question, is the Internet dead? So Scott Rosenberg, the creator of Spotlight today, thanks for putting out that awesome article on Axios. I invite Nation to read it, check it out, and then go check out Casey Newton's article on Platformer. Because if you're tuning into the show right now and you're 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 on LinkedIn, YouTube X, you're a business person, you are on the internet talking with myself, Matt, and C. Marty right now, what we're talking about impacts you. And it's a question I think we all have to be thinking about. Matt. Well, it's... I hadn't seen the article yet. It's in my newsletter yes. inbox of things yes. I need to see. Yeah. Um, but Axios is great. I actually, on my podcast a few weeks ago, had Carrie Flynn on, who is the media reporter for Axios. And we were talking a lot about... Did you pay him? Um, no. Oh, good. I, I was just curious. because I'm was. i I'm just really curious. Am I supposed to pay like... guests on my podcast? No. Oh. I, oh. You are? Oh. Oh. Should I be... Should I be asking you for money? What what's going on here? Is can I share? Thing? Can I share a funny story? So uh -oh. sh sure, go ahead. Uh oh, <laughs> Marty. So are you about I, to call someone out? Are you about, is that about to happen? <laughs> this is what happens in the lab. <laughs> well, Matt, so I got to tell you, man, I was having my coffee this morning and I was reading articles this morning about our show and I stumbled across an, a quas. I stumbled across another piece that was talking about this topic and I invited this incredible author to the show. I said, hey, why don't you come join the conversation with myself and Matt and see Marty Fit? He's like, are you going to pay me? It's like, oh, I I didn't know that I was supposed to pay you. So, and, and, then, and then the comment was, and then the comment was, Matt Worst, yeah, but you sold your company for millions of dollars. I'm like, uh, I'm not sure how that's relevant to, today, to today's discussion. And then, and, then, and then the comment was, yes, but you're using my free content to drive value for your show. 
Like, uh, but that author is also leveraging your audience to gain awareness and attention to drive sales of their book. Well, no, but Matt, but I only have 1,700 followers. And then C. Marty doesn't have anybody on his networks. And Matt Worse doesn't have anybody followers on his networks. So, of course, we are nothing here in the lab. So, if you want to come on the show and be a part of our platform, you're more than welcome to come. But you're not getting paid. Sorry, Matt Worse. You get a mug or a hat, maybe. No. Well, yeah, the mug is going to be the key. Um, the, the merch, the merch is good. Uh, no, I, 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 um, I don't have as many episodes on my podcast yet as you do. But we, that's never even come up with any guests. And I've had, you know, top fifty CMOs, reporters, ad tech CEOs, um, and I don't know how we got into this conversation about <laughs> podcasting. But I, oh, I was talking about Carrie Flynn, who she, yes. she's an Axios reporter. So going back to your question about AI. Right. Like Google and companies of that ilk are far too big to allow too much disruption to change or drastically impact their business anytime soon. So the fact that Google is adopt adapting and adopting new technology, like maybe things are changing, but Google has way too much skin in the game yeah. to to blow this. And Microsoft is the same way. We haven't talked about Microsoft yet, but Microsoft is to me, the leader in this space. Interesting. I, I think uh, Satya Nadella, he's the greatest CEO of our time. And I hard to argue that Matt. I, I, I can't argue with you there, pal. He has done an incredible job building that company back. Hasn't he? Yeah. And, and like knowing where to play strategic bets and the fact that like working with governments and here mm -hmm. in the U S they're building some uh, starlight, star wave, star com. I don't remember what it's one of those is an agency. One of those though is going to be whatever Microsoft is doing with the governments to ensure that things are accessible, fair, accurate, safe, et cetera. Um, but then on the other side, you'll have those nut job skeptics who are like, Oh, I don't want Microsoft telling me what my AI should be doing. And, there's going to be this ebb and flow, give and take. But Google, Microsoft, they're not going away. And the fact that Microsoft is partnering with and has invested in OpenAI, and I'm sure Google will scoop up other technology solutions to add to its stack and arsenal of AI automated Avengers. But I, I'm not worried about like perplexity ruining search. I think it will collectively triangulate to make things better and guess what the free market and the consumer will tell us if what we collectively are doing to make progress is actually regressing and stop using it i hope um or maybe we're just going to train them to be you know cogs in our machine that changes and then takes over the world shirley palmer do you guys know who shelly palmer is shelly palmer writes a great ai newsletter he's an advisor to you know, CEOs and CMOs of the stars. He has a great AI newsletter. And he wrote, I don't know if it was this weekend or yesterday or today, but like the question that he posed is, is AI going to end the world? Because that you hear mm. that, right? Like the, mm. you know, the mm. movies from the 80s and mm. you know, like War Games. And, yes. And Terminator and like Skynet and all that and Hal. And his, his hypothesis was like, that's not what it's going to be. It's going to be the fact that we're going to invest so much into it. And the energy and the electricity and like the very real tangible challenges that come with building chips and driving machines that are powering all this, like that might just destroy the earth because we're going to all be underwater because of the amount of energy it's going to take to power all these machines. Right. Yeah. right? So like no matter where we go, we're going to have to adjust. listen, learn and adjust to make sure that we're not all AI submarines. Yes, because we're underwater, right? I, I so, so, great conversation, gentlemen. We can clearly go on about this all day, and there's really not an end point to it because we're in the middle of it right now. We're actually, frankly, we're at the beginning of it. Matt and Marty, I, I think in many ways, it's it's probably a similar conversation that was being had. Matt, maybe even back when you and I first met, right? When when we were transitioning from trios and Blackberries to iPhones, and we were learning about how Google Search and how the internet was going to change from the analog world to remember Matt when we start, first started working through we talking about yeah, it's digital marketing we're like huh digital marketing is that just what marketing is right so you know we're, we're we're in many ways you know the shift is happening around us it's 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 an interesting shift and Matt I think you said it best my friend the market is going to determine and decide how we embrace it 
I think we're going through a rough ride, though. I think we're going to go through a rough ride of of restructuring the internet, restructuring uh, the economies of the internet, and I think it's going to play out over the next few years, and we're going to go through a rough ride before we emerge from it. Well, that's why my advice and your accountability check-in from earlier, for those who missed it, I think remains prescient. It's like, don't lose sight of the our health, yes. emotional, mental, and physical, because those are things that will ground us. Like, what's our home base? What are our priorities? What are the things that matter? I ask all the time, what matters? Yes. And the answer to each of us is slightly different, but not losing sight of what matters is what will ensure that we uh, we still matter to each other. What a great way to bring a tech nerdy conversation home with a human statement, Matt Worst. Seriously. Hey, see, Marty, like what matters really is our humans. Take care of yourself as a human being as you get through today. It's Monday, Accountability Mondays. Matt, thanks for joining our conversation today. Dude, I, I you know, we obviously could have gone for hours in this, and I really appreciate your point of view and so forth. How can Nation find you? How can LinkedIn Nation find you? How can Business Athlete Nation find you? I got you on the ticker here on LinkedIn on Matt Worst. Where else can they find you, pal? Uh, it's actually Matthew Worst. Matthew Worst. My yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah, it's fine. I, you know what? Way back when, when we were creating our handles, I had no idea <laughs> that brevity would have been better. But you know, on X, it's at M Worst. On Threads, it's at M Worst. On LinkedIn, it is Matthew Worst. So I maybe I got to do a better job of branding. But that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Matt, mine says Christopher on on LinkedIn. So oh, is that what the C is for? All right. Or well, maybe not. <laughs> Christopher. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So, so yeah i'm i'm around awesome what do you got going on today pal before we say goodbye what do you got going on today you know i'm recording a podcast with um, a friend of mine and an industry icon actually re, uh, leads the biggest influencer and creator marketing technology and agency wow. solution called influential so i'm talking to him later today and i am working with a company called genuine oh. uh, genuine i am i don't know if you know them they started out building um really a decentralized community platform for creators. But the evolution of this company is going to be really interesting. And we didn't really get into retail media networks or sort of the nuts and the nuts and bolts of where the internet is right now, not necessarily where it's going. But genuine is giving brands, retailers, ownership of their content and data in their owned and operated platforms. So how we leverage AI to make the content better for Home Depot and Walmart and CVS. And the answer is going to be through the next generation of content that we all create. And it's not a retail media network. It's a community media network. And well, that's what I'm working on today. Well, then you know what? You just set the hookup for conversation part two with Matt Worst and C. Marty Fit and friends here in the lab, which is what's the future of the retail media network? What's the future of the community networks? So perhaps we come back next week or the week after Matt Worst. And we have the second part of this conversation around just that, because I'm really curious about that. And I think Nation would be curious to know what that looks like as we move to the future. Because I saw your post yesterday around, you know, what's happening in Lowe's and these different places and all these, these retail media networks and how that's changing. So I would love to invite you back to have a conversation, Matt. Would you join us again? I would be honored. Next time, though, can we get mugs? Can we get those mugs? I, I, okay. I guess, see, Marty, I guess I got to get that done before <laughs> before we get them back. I, I tried to tell him that. I tried. <laughs> it's all good. I'm just look, th you're you're learning. This is no <laughs> AI was going to tell you that mugs are the secret <laughs> to your success. I promise you that. <laughs> see, Marty, before we say goodbye, my friend, what's going on, on your agenda today, pal? Same stuff, man. Got a couple more clients, couple phone calls, get a workout in. And, awesome. and make and make some content. Stay, hey, stay tuned for it tonight. I got some stuff for you, Keith. Beautiful, beautiful. I got a good one for you. We're going to connect later today as well. Awesome. Well, Nation, I hope you guys enjoyed the chat today with myself, C. Marty Fit, Matt Worse. We talked about is the internet dead? You know, and I don't know if that, you know, and listen, we didn't start the conversation knowing that there was going to be an end. I didn't start the conversation knowing that we were going to have an answer. This wasn't the conversation about is the internet dead? Yeah, it's dead. Off. We're going. See you guys tomorrow. No, it's a conversation that I think is starting today that we're all going to need to be considering as we're weaving these tools into our lives, as we're weaving in the new chat GPT tools, the new, the new, you know, Gemini tools from Google perplexity, et cetera, et cetera. And asking ourselves, you know, how it's going to impact us. And it's a conversation that I think we're going to continue having as the days and the weeks go on, but nation we're back later tomorrow mornings in the lab today. I am back with my guest, Mark Boer for Live in the Lab with Keith Bells, the soldier returns. Matt, Marty, this gentleman was a soldier for the United States military. 
He's done an. Inc- he's been a lawyer. He's been, he's been part of the de- Department of Defense. Uh, Mark has done a lot of incredibly cool things, and he's come back for round two. We're going to dig into. I think the cool parts of his career, frankly. So I invite Nation to join me today at 1 o'clock Eastern Time for a live conversation with Mark Moore. And then, of course, Marty, we're back tomorrow morning here in the lab to continue the conversations that moves the needle around. And um, and no, if you want to be a guest, you be a guest, but we're not going to pay you, except with a mug. Matt Worse, thanks for jumping in today, pal. See Marty Fit. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Appreciate you, day. Matt. We're making content, and uh, you guys have sure. a great one, okay? We'll see you guys later, have a Nation. great one. Ciao.